All right, hello and welcome to a short little tutorial for Icarus. This is a kind of loosely recorded tutorial as we're in the last stages before the release. I just suspect that uh, what I've seen from watching people use Icarus, a lot of you might uh, find it a little complicated at first, so I want to make sure that you have a good place to start and understand what Icarus is for and what you can do with it. Um, I'm not going to go into any special definitions of things, I'll just show you an example. Uh, we'll create one blueprint together uh, and have one reference to that blueprint and that's about it. Uh, so um, let's go. The first thing you need to know about Icarus is that there is a core concept in Icarus which is blueprints. Unlike all other world building tools, which I know of, uh, we don't provide you with a set of templates that you have to fill in. You make those templates. So uh, let's, let's think what we want to have in our world. Most likely our worlds will have characters. So we'll create a blueprint and we'll give it the name character. Note the singular here. This is a blueprint for any character, not already a character. Uh, if we now click on attributes, we can define what makes a character in our world. What do we want to know about characters in our world? Now, the first thing every character should have is a name. This is now an attribute of that character. Uh, next up, we need to think about what a name is. There are various different attribute types, and a name is evidently for us just a text. Uh, there are also other ones. We can shortly go over them, but we'll do that in a moment. And now if we go into instances of character and we create a new one and then go to that instance attributes, we can specify the character's name. So there's, this one is Peter and this one is Shellen. Um, and you can have your various characters now. Of course, this is only a very simple example. Characters probably also have an age and uh, maybe they're dead. <clears throat> so for each of these you have a separate thing to put them in. Uh, the age is a number, so you can put in any number. You can also put in decimals, uh, which for an age might not be what you want. Um, and a boolean is a yes or no question, so you have a checkbox which you can tick or not tick. Uh, let's go over the rest of them real quick. So we covered boolean, number and text. Uh, a range is when you have two values. You have a minimum and a maximum. This is useful, for example, if you would say the the, the height range of a race where uh, any character from that ra uh, race could be between 1 meter 70 and 2 meter 40 or whatever. Um, you have a color, which is eye colors, skin colors, hair colors, the color of the blade of a weapon, whatever. Um, choosable and selectable are very similar to one another. In, with a choosable you have a set of options and you can choose one. With a selectable, you have a set of options and you can choose a number of them. So let's say this is our character's alignment. Uh, we're playing D&D and we have a bunch of op options for this, which we can add. Now, the first option uh, is lawful good. The second option is neutral good, uh, chaotic good. I'm only going to do the first five, uh, lawful neutral neutral and so on and so forth and now you could for your character select any one of these uh, but only one at a time like a character can only be lawful good or chaotic good he can't be both at the same time uh, say they should be able to have both at the same time then you want to pick a selectable which is the same thing with the only diff with the only differences you can select as many of them as you want uh, the last two I apologize for the belts the last two are reference and reference list and we'll get to that now uh, say every character in our game has one gun or one weapon. So we'll make a new blueprint and we'll call it weapon. Now a weapon again has a name and uh, a damage value, which is just a number. So let's go ahead and create two weapons. The first one is a spear, which does 15 damage. And the second one is a knife, which does 12 damage because the knife sucks. Um, and we'll immediately see that uh, we have these values put in now, but we want to say that our character uh, specifically also has a weapon. In order to do that, we create a reference. Say this is the character's weapon. Click on settings, and now we, Icarus wants to know which blueprint this references, so we drag, we just click and drag the weapon in here. 
Now if we go to uh, character, let's go to Peter. Peter wants to have a weapon here, so let's take any of these weapons. And ooh, what is this? Empty representation. Uh, Icarus doesn't know how you want your weapons to be displayed. So in order to tell Icarus, there's this concept called representations, which you can open up and it opens small and you can add a so-called representation part. I'll just demonstrate what it does. You can select an attribute here, so let's select name, and immediately this will be filled in with the name of the uh, that we gave the instance. So this was the spear, but maybe we also want to have it separated by a colon um, and the damage value. So now you'll immediately see this spear, colon 50. And when we now drag the spear in, uh, there's no preview, preview display for it, but trust me, we're dragging it, you see the little circle on the side. Uh, we now have, say that uh, Peter uses a spear which does 15 damage, which is cool. Uh, now, of course, Peter doesn't have a representation yet, but that's not necessarily necessary. Um, the last thing we need to talk about is reference lists. Uh, a reference list is the same to a reference as it's selectable to a choosable, that is to say, uh, with a reference, you can have one reference. With a reference list, you can have as many. If, uh, if Peter can have as many weapons as you want, like you can have a spear and a knife, then you use a reference list, which allows you to drag in as many as you want. Um, and last but not least, there's the concept of constraints. And if we want to say that the age must be at least zero, in case we mistype each other, then if we now uh, say that Peter is negative 15 years old, we'll have an exclamation mark here that will say the number should be larger or equal to zero. Uh, as soon as we set it back to zero, this obviously works again. Um, that's it for the tutorial. I hope that you sort of understand what Icarus is getting at. Uh, if I was a little too fast, uh, you can scroll back between the video, try to watch different parts, uh, or you can simply join our Discord. I'll uh, have a link to that in the description, and I hope you enjoy Icarus as much as I enjoyed working on it. Thank you very much.